you've outlined this vision for what you call a infrastructure Kudesa. Can you give us some uh, idea of where this idea came from, as well as what you're hoping to achieve with it? Now, we've reached a point where the level of trust between the public and the private sector is probably at a, at a low point. We're also sitting on a situation where infrastructure needs have been well identified. There's significant resources, both in the public and the private sector, to address those needs. But the work is just not happening. And so we felt that a CODESA type process where you bring all affected parties together, negotiate uh, the, what they see as the major obstacles to rolling out that program, and then working together to actually start the implementation process would be a useful inf intervention. Now we see it as a very detailed negotiation, which could take up to six months. But in the meantime, we could probably start with one of the projects, you know, focused on housing or focused on schools, to show that cooperation and partnership and negotiation can produce optimal outcomes for the country. In fact, you say that <coughs> social infrastructure probably should be the initial focus. We've got these big mega projects, power stations, railway lines, ports, but there's a definite problem in terms of delivery on the social infrastructure, the schools, uh, the I houses, think, the toilets. I think there are two reasons. One is that it improves li people's lives immediately if you get those pieces of infrastructure in place. Secondly, they are more open to smaller projects with higher intensity of labor activity. So we can have a labor-intensive process of building a house, a labor-intensive process of building a, sh a small road, which I think are easier to manage than some of the mega projects. And you, in terms of this process going forward, what sort of response have you had both from your private sector colleagues as well as your former colleagues in the public sector? I think the private sector response has been you know, clearly very positive, uh, particularly from the construction industry, from the engineering design fraternity, from some of the contracting bodies, um, it's been very positive. The interaction with government has been very limited so far, but we're planning in the next week or two to write a document which describes the process in a bit more detail, and then to try and begin to debate that with the key people in government. Because ultimately what will need to happen is a couple of key people in the private sector with a couple of key people from the public sector will need to lead this process. You know, we have the PICC in government, we have the BLSA and BUSA in the private sector, but we, I think we're going to need a little bit more than that to get the process going. In fact, what do you think the relationship should be with uh, this sort of forum and the PICC, which is the Presidential Infrastructure Coordinating Commission? I think it should be one of the main participants from, from the government side. But what we need in addition to that are some of the line functions and the Treasury. And I think we would then have a sufficient participation from the public sector uh, to get the process going. And if you could outline your vision for, say, a road or a school building initiative, how would you see this negotiated solution working? So, I mean, the, you know, schooling is a very, very good example where it's an urgent need. It will have an impact on the quality of education. Let's assume we needed to build 50 schools. If we got together the best designers of schools, and ask them to share their intellectual capital in a collective exercise. We could jointly design what we think is an optimal school for South African conditions. Not necessarily for, you know, for the best design, but for the, for the conditions in which our, our schools need to operate, it would be the best. We can then have a similar process to work out what we think is an optimal price. And we could then have a tender process to ensure competition, but guided by a maximum price rather than a price setting process by the private sector. So I think we could have the benefit of more schools being built quickly, definitely better designed, and clearly cheaper if we, if we, if we conduct it through this participatory process. And what do you see as identify as the main next steps in this uh, journey that you've undertaken? I think describing what the CODESA process could look like, maybe identifying one or two of the uh, projects that can be undertaken to show that this, this concept works, and then finding the relevant partners to start the process. So we're going to be spending the next two or three weeks developing a document and talking to hundreds of people. And finally, finally, what is in it for PPC? I think for PPC in the long term, clearly it will be a beneficiary. If the infrastructure program is implemented, growth increases, we have a bigger economy, 
and we will be, together with everybody else in the private sector, a beneficiary. We are not doing this with a short-term view to selling more cement. We are doing this to building a sustainable economic growth story in South Africa.